So welcome everybody, I'm here to talk about I Want to Dance with Somebody, which I saw on the last day of 2022 at the cinema in Dover. And I think it's a film that begins quite promisingly. It affords us a glimpse into the already prestigious family background of Whitney Houston. Her mother was Sissy Houston and her cousin was the legendary Dionne Warwick. And we grasp something of the showbiz pedigree into which she was born and how her fame was able to be picked up and nurtured, turning Whitney into the only artist to have secured seven consecutive number one hits on the Billboard Top 100 chart. But this is a biopic which has surprisingly little to offer in the final half hour, where it tries to make an earnest statement about its subject's last day on earth, following a drug-related drowning in her hotel room at the age of 48, but without being able to give the sort of redemptive coda which a film like this really needs. Instead, it focuses on the impressive standout performances that Whitney gave over the years, including at the 1994 American Music Awards, and which cemented her reputation. But this cannot escape the fact that Houston's life came to a premature, ignoble end, and any effort to try and cement that fact is inevitably going to be diminished by the random and unfulfilled aspect of her fall from grace in the final decade of her life. Now, we don't see her death, but since director Kazai Lemons has chosen to slow down the pace of the film once Whitney's addiction is in full flow, it does feel like an uneven film, both brave enough to shine the spotlight on Whitney's battle with narcotics, while simultaneously unprepared to shine a light into the abyss, choosing to step back and play up the singer's prelapsarian days instead. Now, most people going into this movie will have a pretty clear idea in their heads as to who Whitney was and why she was such a formidable talent. But the deeper I Want to Dance with Somebody goes, the more superficial its treatment ends up being. There is an impressive texture to the nature of Whitney's relationship with her assistant, Robin Crawford. And the film doesn't pretend that they weren't in love. But this part of Whitney's life is then crowded out by the tumultuous marriage to bad boy Bobby Brown. And there are too many loose ends not tied up. Considering the degree to which Crawford is presented as the major muse and love interest in Houston's life, the filmmakers seem unprepared to want to follow it through. Now, in terms of giving us a medley of Whitney's greatest hits, this as a film provides an impressive showcase with British actress Naomi Aki, a very convincing Whitney Houston. But it otherwise feels perfunctory. This two halves dimension of the movie is what disappoints. Having spent the first half relishing the chance to re-experience Houston's career in a full and fluid montage of her early years, the film shifts tonally towards documenting her disintegration and decline. And it is at this point that the film sags. All the characters are presented as looking out for Whitney's interests. Her agent, Clive Davis, is here presented as wanting nothing but for the singer to flourish. He's also the film's executive producer. With only Whitney's father presented in the film as the villain of the piece due to his financial scandals and overt homophobia. The blueprint of every musical biopic is followed here to the letter so that it feels interchangeable with the Aretha Franklin biopic, Respect. But this is more anodyne than is deserved for a star of Whitney Houston's pedigree.